Managing Director of Main Training. How to package your message to leverage your positioning, impact and income. Ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend, all the way from Perth, Western Australia, Woo! How many of you heard that saying, you are what you eat? Yeah, yeah. When you meet people for the first time, which I assume you've all been doing this, this weekend, what's the first question people ask you? What do you do? What do you do? You're not what you eat. You are what you niche. Your 30 second elevator pitch that Sam was just talking to you about, this is the thing you have to get right. We live in a world now where we can no longer make sales, we can no longer have a business, we can no longer leverage our authority, we can no longer make an impact by just telling people what we do. Telling people what services and products and what message we have to offer is not enough to do this. You need to give value. Write this down, there are two things you need to do when answering the question, what do you do? Number one, is you need to tell people how they will stop feeling if they use your product or service. How will they stop feeling? Number two is how they will start feeling if they use your product or service or listen to your message. By telling people how they will stop feeling, how they will start feeling when they use their product, your product or service, you are telling them about it in a way that makes them feel like they've been given value. You are educating them. It's a very, very noisy world out there. We've been talking about this. Sam's model of celebrity authority being at the top is the person who's not just telling people what they do, which is at the bottom of that triangle. It's positioning yourself as the guru, as the expert in a field, in a particular niche, by educating people about it. Now, I want to do a little survey just to make my point here. How many people in this room are here today as a result of specifically looking up Sam, going to Sam's website, looking through his whole website, finding the information about this program, reading the information about this program and thinking, that sounds good, paying your money there and then online and ta-da, you're here now. How many people got here today by using that method? One? How many people are here today as a result of attending a free workshop? Whoa! <laughs> I want to make the point here, guys, of it doesn't matter how nice your website is, although you need one. It doesn't matter how good your business cards are, your flyers, your brochures are, your speaker profile even is, although you need all of those. You guys have paid good money to come here on this program because you attended a workshop where you were given value, you were given information, you saw somebody demonstrate their credibility, their capability, their knowledge. It assured you that this person, having already given you value, was going to give you more if you paid the money to come and see more of them. You need to be turning your information, your knowledge and your expertise into learning products and programs if you're going to leverage yourself as the authority in your field. To make a bigger impact, you need to be out there. I'm going to get you started on actually doing this today. So one of the key things I need you guys to remember is when you are telling people about what you do and what value that gives, you are educating. This makes you an infopreneur. But importantly, you are also an entrepreneur. I heard somebody say, I've got to start making money in four weeks. Being an entrepreneur means educating commercially. Commercially means making sales while you're doing it. So this is all about packaging it as learning products and programs. Here are some examples of what you can do. Now obviously you guys attended a face-to-face -face program which then encouraged you to come on a paid face-to-face -face program. So could you run workshops in what you do? I would say to you the number one piece of gold out of all the many platforms of, of learning products and learning programs, if you're going to start anywhere, if you're going to invest your time or your money, whether you're going to do it yourself or outsource it, the workbook is the king. The workbook is the king because it's a consolidation of all of your knowledge, your information, of your IP. It's interactive because the workbook has exercises and activities in, and I'm going to show you how to build one shortly. 
and it can form the script for keynotes. It can then form the script for videos and webinars. If you've got a free webinar up on your YouTube channel and you refer to your workbook, hey guys, if you turn to page 10 now, you will see my step-by-step -step model of. If you turn to page 22, you will see that you can now dot, dot, dot. If people haven't got that workbook, they're going to want to find it. It may be that you're selling that workbook outright on one of your website pages. It could be that you've designed a learning product or program at a bronze, silver, gold and VIP level. You may just have free videos and free webinars at the bronze level. That gives people, like Sam did for you, an opportunity for you to give your credibility, give them value, not tell them what you do, let them experience what you do. You may, at the, the silver level, have um, a small payment. Maybe it's $100, maybe it's $200, where that unlocks the workbook that goes with the free video. Perhaps you have a, a gold package that for maybe four or five hundred dollars, you get the free videos, you get the workbook, and you get a live Q&A webinar every month. VIP, all of that plus one hour coaching monthly. All of these platforms are learning products and programs, the opportunity for you to get your message out there and charge money for it too. It doesn't need to be overly complicated. Um, does anybody know this guy? Mr. Robert Corey? Yeah. You, are going, you will know him by the end of today. Um, Mr. Robert Corey is an international best-selling author. He is the star of a reality TV show over in LA. He owns um, an extremely popular worldwide training program called Feed a Starving Crowd, and I'm sure he'll tell you a lot more about, about that later. We helped him build that program, and we did that simply with interview transcripts. Simply with interview transcripts. How many people here have either done interviews with anyone or done a free podcast? Yeah? Any of you got blog articles? Yeah? Any of you written a book? Right? Pretty much everybody in this room already has stuff that they can turn into a learning product or program. And again, I'm going to show you how. So just start with what you've already got. Start with what you already know. How many people in this room have got to where they are today without learning anything? Nobody. You've all learned something along the way, and there are people out there that need to hear it. You do have a message. Download it, brain dump it, and start selling it as a learning product or program. So this is just an example of an interview, just a transcript of an interview, and um, what you can make it look like afterwards. So you're going to start with learning outcomes. When you go through your transcript or your articles or your blogs or your book, or you um, get the transcript for your video that you've, you've got on YouTube, Write the learning outcomes, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second. Put your content together in a right way that's easy to read. And then add exercises and activities at the end so that people can cement and, and put into practice the learning that you've given them. The key things, the most important things to do if you want to start doing this now is from your content, write down the learning outcomes. What will people be able to do? What will people know? And what attitudes or feelings or perceptions will people have by the end of watching that webinar, reading that workbook, coming to your face-to-face -face training session? So then there's the content framework. So what we mean by this is the order that your stuff comes in, basically. If it's a large program, you might have multiple chapters. If it's a very small program, it's still going to have multiple learning outcomes. So this is all about making sure you, um, you organize it, sequence it, and cluster it in a way that is really easy for people to learn and take on board. And then finally, you have to get all of your existing stuff and check whether it's the right stuff. So by our analysis, we mean, has the stuff I've got aligned in any way to the learning outcomes? If it hasn't, get rid of it. Use it for another chapter. Use it for another, another training program. If you find that you've got a learning outcome that doesn't have any stuff to go next to it, then clearly that's the only stuff you need to go and find. So you don't have to get yourself completely overwhelmed with all this knowledge you have in your head and the files and files and files of content that you've built up until now. You know that I only need to go and find that one piece and it keeps you nice and focused. I would like you to write down the top three learning out outcomes people are going to get from the message you delivered yesterday. So whether it's your keynote speech that you can turn into a workbook, that you could turn into a workshop, three learning outcomes. So number one is what will they be able to do? Number two is what will they know? And number three is how will they feel or what will their attitude be like? 
how will they perceive life differently? It must start with a measurable word. For no, you can't just say, by the end of this training session, you will understand. Understand isn't measurable. Demonstrate, explain, identify, that is measurable. By the end of your webinar, they will be able to. This is how you write a learning product or program. By the way, this is exactly the same method you use to write a book, for those of you who are going to do this. So, you get yourself some big sticky butcher's paper. Um, you get yourself a whole bunch of post-it notes, some colored pens, and you basically turn your spare room into a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> um, so, what you do here is you've now structured your basic chapters. You know what your chapters are going to be, and you kind of have piles of content to go into them. So, if this is your sticky butcher's page here, you're going to put your title at the top. This might be unit one. This might be unit two. And then what you have in the middle is your learning outcomes, the learning outcomes you've just written. This is a keynote, whether it's a webinar, whether it's a workbook, doesn't matter. You put your learning outcomes in the middle, and then you start going through your content. As Sam said, put everything on post-it notes. This stops you putting too much fluff in. This makes sure that you only take out the really important points, the really important notes. By the way, this is a color code, and I'm going to tell you what the color codes are in a minute. So around your learning outcomes on your sheet, you then put um, little post-it notes of all of your major points. And the reason, guys, I use post-it notes physically and I don't use anything electronic is when you've got this all up on the wall, you might go, oh, actually, that post-it note fits better over here. You can move it around. It's, it's a lot more flexible. You can see the whole program out in front of you. Learning outcomes in the middle, and you're putting your ideas, your knowledge, your IP, your content, your information, your expertise, one by one on post-it notes that match those learning outcomes for that unit, or that chapter, or that keynote, or that webinar. So this makes sure that you're only putting information in that that's relevant to the outcomes. Massive brain dump. Just a massive brain dump at this stage, yes. There's a sequence, and um, I personally use colors. As you're putting to all of your content on your butcher's page, you will find that you might have more of one colour than another, which tells you that your learning styles will not be balanced, that you'll only be giving a certain kind of information or a certain kind of training. Well, to give a good training session, to give a good webinar, to give a good keynote, you need to be delivering to a mixed medium of audience. So this is, for those of you who can't um, see, see this, there are a number of colours I use. We have pink colours. You can't see this very well, but there is a pastel pink and there is a bright pink. The pastel pink are your own personal stories or personable stories. So you start off every chapter in a learning, in a learning workbook or in a learning program with something that people can relate to that has something to do with that topic. I use bright pink for somebody else's story. So I use bright pink for a case study or somebody else that other people can relate to. Then my greens, which I have a pastel green and I have a bright lime green. The greens are your own IP, your personal knowledge, your concepts, your ideas. The first one is an introduction of your idea, your solution to the overall topic. You touch on it, you don't say how, you just say what it is. My solution is... Bah. Then you have blue colours. Again, I have a pastel blue and a bright blue. The pastel blue is other people's ideas, research, statistics, other people's concepts or models that back up you, that back up what you just said your idea was, your message was, your solution was. The bright blue is then my own take on that. So I might say, well, this guy said, or the statistics show that. However, I think, or I believe, or I apply his idea in this way. A yellow might be some more generic content, some more generic information on that topic. So you wouldn't always have the yellow in there. But that's just if you found that you had content that was still very, very vital to your learning outcome. Your lime green, this is the big one. This is your 
bam bomb. This is your wow bomb. This is your revelation, your resolution, your personal step-by-step -step model four, your method of attaining X, Y, and Z. This is your absolute message. This is when you solve their problem that that chapter, that unit, that talk is related to. And then finally at the end I have purple. And purple represents activities and exercises. This makes it more than just a book. This is where people can put into practice your theory, your information, your knowledge. Thanks. So do you guys, uh, do we enjoy that? Yeah, fantastic.